Now that we've gone through all the major categories of all the expenses I spend to day trade each month, we have a grand total of Day trading is a business, it's not a hobby. And just like any business, it takes a lot of capital investment and operating expenses in order to make more profits. I see many beginner day traders online trying to avoid commissions or paying for premium subscriptions. But if you're running a business and trying to scale up, you cannot be cheaping out and trying to cut corners. This is especially true in day trading. Once you've figured out a few trading strategies that work well, it's time to invest more money into this business to make more profits. In this video, I want to break down exactly how much money I spend for day trading in all of these different categories, such as day trading platforms, tools, commissions, locate fees, and many, many more. I use many of these tools to scan for stocks to trade, analyze stock structure, research fundamentals, and execute these ideas in the fastest way possible. And of course, they also help me to smash the like button because that's the surest way to double your trading account every single day. So let's start with the first expense category, market data and trading platform fees. I get this question a lot in all my YouTube videos. Which day trading platform do you use and which one is the fastest and the best for day trading? And my answer to that, hands down, Das Trader Pro. A very common misconception many new traders have is thinking Das Trader Pro is a broker. And it's not. Das Trader Pro is a direct access market data provider that allows traders to execute orders on various platforms. And the reason many professional traders choose to execute their trades on Das Trader platform instead of the defaults from their brokers is of course the low latency order fills and reliability on the platform. That's why I use Dash Trader Pro and have it connected to various brokers and pay for multiple subscriptions per month. Personally, I use three separate Dash Trader Pro Elite subscriptions, one of each connection to my three brokers, Interactive Brokers, Cobra Trading, and Centerpoint Securities. However, if you trade enough order volume, some brokers will waive the platform fee. So essentially, you could get a free $175 credit each month. And some broker will even give you additional discount on commissions and locate fees. I'll talk more about this later on in the video, so stay tuned. That's why my platform fees at Cobra Trading is actually $0. I also have a replay add-on for additional $15 a month. The total cost for my day trading data and platform fees come out to $365 per month. And we're just warming up and getting started with all the day trading spendings here. Next up, let's look at our day trading research platforms, such as Scanners, Newswire, and SEC Filings Research. The best stock scanner I've been using for so many years now is Trade Ideas. This is a technical scanner I use every single morning pre-market to scan for gappers, whether it's small caps, large caps, or even sometimes overnight gap downs. I also use the stock detail analysis tool on Trade Ideas to really quickly analyze the stock's float, market cap, and short interest. This is an extremely useful tool for me to do some really quick analysis on the fly, especially when the scanner pick up any low float runners. So Trade Ideas is definitely a very essential tool to my trade planning process every single morning. I have a video tutorial on how to set up this scanner on my YouTube channel if you want to check that out. Now let's take a look at the Trade Ideas subscriptions. I use a standard plan and the monthly cost would have been 118 a month. But I pay for the annual subscription since I use it every single day for 1068 and I got it with a 15% off discount. So the cost is $908 for me per year. So that would be around $76 per month. 
Moving on to the next research tool, and that's for news. I personally use Benzinga Pro. Benzinga Pro is a news wire service, but also has some technical scanner components to it, such as the movers feature. But I mostly use Benzinga Pro to do my fundamental and news research. I want to know why the stock is up in the first place. Is it because they have FDA approval? Was it phase one, phase two? Or was it because of earnings and guidance? And if the company does indeed have earnings, what are the numbers like for earnings per share, revenue growth, etc.? All of these are important headlines that we as traders need to understand before we buy or sell a stock. Another extremely useful feature on Benzinga Pro is the Squawk Box, in which you can listen to Benzinga Chardy, aka my husband. Yes, that's right, Benzinga Chardy is my one true love, and that's the source of my happiness, and I pay for $9.50 a year. See, money can buy happiness. Okay, okay, sorry, I got a little bit carried away. So Squawk Box feature is very useful because you can listen to Benzinga Charlie say out loud the real-time news alerts. Sometimes on the Squawk Box when Benzinga Charlie goes on break, you'll hear this other guy say other things and I just tune out. I don't know his name, let's just call him Bag Holder Mike. I think I just like Charlie more, but uh, I might be biased. The regular cost for Benzinga Pro is $177 per month. However, just like trade ideas, I've been on the annual plan for many, many years. The annual cost now is now $1,400, but I'm on the grandfathered plan of around $900 per year before they raise their prices. And that's also after a 25% discount I used when I first purchased many years ago. Therefore, I spend about $75 per month on Benzinga Pro. By the way, if you're interested in trying out any of these tools I talk about in the video, such as Dashrader Pro, Trade Ideas, and Benzinga Pro, I'll put links to some of the free trials or 15 to 25% off discount codes in the description below. I would only recommend trading tools I personally use and like, and I've been using and paying for all of these tools for many, many years now. The next news research platform I use is Briefing. This is also a premium service for news and fundamental research. I mostly use Briefing for reading large cap earnings reports and the details of the conference calls, whether the company made any comments on the guidance and future outlooks or any major fundamental changes that will move the price of a stock. There's only monthly payment plan for Briefing, so I pay for the plan for $89 per month. The last of the research tools is called Flash SEC. I've tried out many premium websites for SEC filings research over the years, and this one is definitely my favorite so far. I pay for a monthly subscription for $44 a month. All right, let's move on to perhaps the most exciting day trading expense category, broker fees, such as trading commissions and short locate fees. Now, I'm sure many of you guys must be wondering, Oh my God, Humble Trader, why are you still paying for broker commissions? It's 2022 now, you can trade for free at so many $0 commission broker apps on your iPhone. I think for beginner traders starting out, it's totally fine to play around trading on these free commission brokers like Robinhood, Weibo, and many, many others. But if you one day want to start taking trading seriously as a full-time career, using these premium trading brokers that require you to pay commissions is 100% worth it. My stance on this is I don't want to be saving pennies on commissions and lose dollars in profits. Plus, all of these fees, including the subscription tools I mentioned earlier, they are all tax write-offs for day trading income since they are all business expenses. All right, when it comes to the actual numbers, I trade with three different brokers. On Interactive Brokers and CenterPoint, it's very simple for me to find the total cost of commissions and other fees each month. 
However, it's nearly impossible to do so on Cobra Trading. If you recall a video I did revealing my broker statements, I literally had to scroll down the PDF statements line by line. There's no automatic calculation of PL, commission costs, and locate fees per month nor per year, and no data exports either. And since I'm making this video during the holiday season, instead of spending the next three hours adding all the numbers up through hundreds of pages of toilet paper line by line, I would really much rather go get drunk from old wine, spiked eggnog, and bury my face in chocolate and good food. So my solution to that is, I'm simply going to find the broker fees from the highest trading month and the lowest volume traded month, and find the average number there in the middle. So the numbers are not going to be 100% accurate, but I'm doing my best here for you ladies and gentlemen here. This video here is of course for your information only. All the numbers here are of course dependent on your trading volume, whether you can get rebates on your route, and whether you're long or short biased, and of course, depending on which broker you are using to day trade. So with all of that said, on average, with a rough estimate like I said earlier, I spend around $3,500 per month on commissions and $2,500 on short locate fees. To be honest, this is not bad at all, especially when it comes to the short locate fees. This year, I'm very conscious of which stocks I locate to short, and after switching my primary shorting broker from Centerpoint to Cobra Trading, I'm saving more than 25% on my short locate fees. They also provide many of the stocks to short free of charge, and lots of commission discount tiers after you trade a certain volume per month. If you have a capital of more than $30,000, I would highly recommend using Cobra Trading. Now that we've gone through all the major categories of all the expenses I spend to day trade each month, we have a grand total of $6,649 of cost per month, which will be $79,788 per year. Remember traders, day trading is a business, and if you want to take this business seriously, you need to spend money investing in the business and to scale up. Rather than just spending $10 to make $100, I would much rather spend more, $100 to make $1,000. And it's the same way when it comes to day trading. That being said, all that $79,000 of expenses can be used as tax deductions against my day trading profits. So if I made $400,000 of profit this year, I can deduct those expenses against my income. So only $321,000 of that income is taxable. With this example, not taking into account the currency exchange in British Columbia, Canada, where I live, I could be saving over 2.75% average tax rate, or $42,000. I am not a CPA nor a financial advisor, but I would be happy to go over some best practices in general to save on taxes legally as a day trader in a future video. So if you're interested in learning more about day trading taxes for the United States or Canada, let me know down below in the comment section below, and make sure to subscribe to see more. Thank you guys so much for watching as always, I'm the Humble Trader, and I will see you guys next time.